Hey, hello YouTube, welcome back to the Avion blog. It's been a while since I did a multimeter review, so what I decided to do is today I uh, decided I'm gonna do a review of, guess what, multimeter. Um, I've recently done some changes to my lab environments and stuff like that as to which meters I use. As some of you know, I have the Fluke 87, Fluke 289, uh, Fluke 177, Fluke 179, etc. Fluke are brilliant meters, but not necessarily my favorite. My favorite is still my, Bre my Bremen TBM829 multimeter, which is now currently on the bench back there. Um, I also make use of another Bremen on my second bench. But I, look, I was looking for something small compact that I could use um, just for measuring power supply voltages on computers. While I'm out in the field, um, I do often encounter computers with faults and I need to check the voltages on them. So I thought, well, I don't want something too expensive or anything too fancy. What should I get? Um, fortunately, the one that I did decide to go with actually seems to work pretty well. I've done comparisons against the Fluke, etc. And it held up pretty well um, to, to my tests. That meter in question is this little guy over here. Um, it's a brand, well, not necessarily a brand, but it's a make that has been uh, brought in by Checkers uh, in South Africa. And it's obviously been rebranded as these are not, a, it's not a well-known brand per se anywhere, but I have seen these same meters rebranded as various other things uh, in the industry. Um, as you, if you look at it, um, you'll see the only branding that it does have, it says Tactics. Now, I use quite a few Tactics uh, screwdrivers, etc., just because they're pretty decent for the money. And uh, in electronics, you don't necessarily need the most heavy-duty screwdrivers and such. So yeah, onto this meter over here. It was purchased, came with some pretty dodgy little leads, but um, like I said, it's for portable use when we're out in the field. If I want to just check a power supply on a computer to make sure the 5 and 12 volts is not way out of spec, I thought, well, I don't really need anything fancy. I'm going to grab me one of these. I'm still looking for another smaller meter, which I'm probably going to import. But for now, this is doing the job quite nicely. So let's get straight into this review and let's see how this little guy adds up. All right. So for the most part, when you look at this meter over here, you'll notice that it is very simplistic. It is not an auto ranging. Um, you kind of have to still select the ranges that you go. But in the end of the day, that's not always important. Um, my impressions of this meter, the leads could do with a, a lot of improvement. I might add a, a set of decent leads on here. The meter build quality isn't spectacular. It creaks and crones a lot. It does have a bit of a rubber sheath. But for my purposes of this specific meter, I think this might all just be fine. What I need to do for my purposes is compare this thing in the voltage scale to uh, something that's a, a better known voltage uh, reference. So I'm going to bring in my Bremen TBM829 just so we can do some voltage reading comparisons on these two meters and see how they actually uh, stack up. So first thing is first, I'm just going to quickly hook up the test leads uh, to the power supply so that we can uh, do a direct comparison between the two uh, meters. Gonna take a sec. Okay. So we've got our meters hooked up uh, to a DC power supply. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to DC voltage. Now I'm going to start at a low voltage, so this one being manual, I'm going to set it to 2 volts, and we're going to see how it compares. So first thing we do is we're going to switch on the output on the power supply, and we can see we're getting 0 0.875 volts plus minus. Um, Pretty much they're both um, within reasonable range and accuracy there. Um, the Brainman is obviously 100% accurate, it has a recent calibration on it. So I'm going to slowly just um, increase this, uh, stopping at a few different points and seeing how they compare. Let's go about there. So it goes over range, we have to go to 20 volts. So 2.131 volts, 2.13 volts. I'd say still quite reasonably accurate, uh, this little guy over here. Now the voltages in question for me are 5 volts and 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So uh, this would be the range. So let's get it up to 3.3. And I'm 
and so that's fine, that's 3.302 volts, 3.30 volts, so again, the meter is still quite accurate for measuring that 3.3 volt slide, that's fine, that gives you a good indication that the 3.3 volt rail is working correctly, so we're going to go up to about 5 volts now, I'm not going to worry about trying to get it exact, 5.136, 5.12, Ah, 5.125 as the power supply settles again, quite accurate, um, reasonable for what I'm wanting to use it for. Jump up to about 12, 12.76 volts, 12.75, good enough, um, it's giving me an indication that the 12 volt rail would be fine, whatever the case may be, and of course this could go on and on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to check some more extremes, we're going to go up to the 200 volt scale, because this power supply taps out at around 40 volts. So we've got 39.37, 39.3, 39.4, there we go. As you can see, pretty accurate, um, more than accurate enough for my purposes of this uh, meter. So let's kill that over there. Um, so yeah, for what I'm wanting it for, it is more than adequate uh, for, for doing the voltage checks and stuff like that, especially in, in the DC voltage scale. I'm not going to worry too much about testing the AC voltage scale, I might just connect it up to 230 volts just to see um, how it looks. Uh, in fact, let's do that now quickly. Move the power supply out of the way. First things first, I'm going to get a reference on the foramen of AC volts. So let's do that. Let's hook it up to the AC voltage. Okay, power on. We've got 227.5 volts AC. 227.8, it seems to be hopping around a little bit. So let's check now on the little uh, tactics meter how that handles the 230 volts AC. Let's just hope these little uh, leads reach. Remember, before we do that, is to go to the AC voltage scale. Now you've got your 227 volts AC. Uh, looks good so far. So yeah, all pretty decent um, from measuring volts. So let's just measure a few resistors and see how the resistance side of it works. The one thing that I need to draw your attention to with this is this does not have a buzzer. So to check continuity you would have to select uh, your low ohms and uh, actually measure your ohm scale and uh, see how it works out. But for now let's just check a few resistors on here, some nice low value resistors. So Let's see how this meter handles these uh, lower value resistors. Now, I'm not expecting very accurate uh, sort of resistances. In fact, um, yeah, 1.6 ohms is definitely not right, um, as this is a 1 ohm resistor, I think. I stand to correction. Um, I can't really see the bands from where I am, so. Yeah, it is a 1 ohm resistor um, and showing 1.7 ohms. I know this resistor is about 1.1. So yeah, that is a little bit off. Let's try um, something like a 1 or a 10K, if I can find one here. I should be able to because um, it's quite a common value resistor. I've got a pack of them over here. I'm just going to try and measure them uh, loose without pulling one out of the pack. Okay, so off we go. Here we're measuring 9.81k. So it's okay to check if the resistor is good or not, but don't uh, rely on it necessarily for very accurate uh, resistance measurements because it'll probably let you down a little bit there. But as a reference, not bad at all. Um, let's also try out maybe the diode section. Uh, let's just see if we've got any little transistors lying around over here that we can test. Here we got a little transistor. So I'm going to go to the diode test. I could also, I suppose, plug in a diode, but um, transistor technically is just two diodes. 
So let's try it out. We got 0.823. What else? Let's try. 0.831. Again, it's fine for testing to see if the device is good or not, but um, I wouldn't rely too much on the actual exact readings uh, on these sort of things. So, so far it's looking like a little bit disappointing on your resistance side of things and stuff like that, but for what I'm wanting it for the voltage, not bad at all. So let's uh, take another quick look at uh, the battery bays and etc. on this uh, meter and see what they look like. Right, so let's get these leads off here and get them out of the way. Like I say, not the best leads, very plasticky and cheap. Uh, this is a very loose fitting rubber uh, sort of protection cover. Uh, not the greatest of quality, but you know what, like I said, for what I'm wanting this for, probably more than sufficient. So let's get that out of the way. And uh, we've got two screws to open this meter. Just grabbing the correct screwdriver here. And let's get a look inside. There it is. We've got uh, two screws on the back over here, which you take out, uh, let's put that out of the way, and we should now be able to open this meter up. So we open it up, as you can see we've got the 9 volt battery, a cheap glass fuse, uh, a spring uh, for some shielding over here, single IC, nothing fancy, but then um, this is pretty much what uh, I would expect to see in a 100 rand multimeter, I suppose. Nothing ridiculous. You've got your current shunt over here. As you can see, not much to show. Very little in the way of protection. Um, but again, for what it's being used for, sufficient for what uh, uh, I'm thinking in the protection side, what I would need. So, yeah, I'm not even going to bother digging around and poking around in there too much. Pop it back together again. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the inside of this meter. Uh, nothing wow about that okay so my last thoughts uh, on this meter if you're wanting something as a primary multimeter for your electronics workbench or whatever don't waste your time with one of these they are quite inaccurate for your resistance diode test etc and probably a few of the other things like amps etc but um, as a reference or a guide just to see if something is faulty, like I said, for me, what I'm looking for is something when I go out to a customer's premises so that I can check the power supply, check the voltage rails and stuff like that on their computer. Uh, if there's a problem with it, then obviously it needs to go back to the workbench where I can look at it using my Bremen's or fluke meters or whatever the case may be uh, to get a good reference if there's an issue. But just as a reference, it's like my seventh or eighth multimeter. It's going to go in my toolkit, my portable toolkit, along with a multi screwdriver and a knife and a couple of other things. Bearing in mind, I also carry my Leatherman Surge, Leatherman Wingman, etc. So I'm generally pretty well tooled. But um, this is just the meter, just to give me a reference indication of if something's working or not. It's fine for that. So everybody, that pretty much ends off this review of the Tactics uh, 43001 uh, Checkers brand multimeter. Chinese rebranded to various other things. So I suppose the little hold button is the telltale sign um, of the rebranding of these. But yeah, not bad for if you're just wanting a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, second, whatever multimeter just as a reference. Um, not very reliable when it comes to um, some of the scales and stuff like that, but for voltage measurement DC, which is all I'm really wanting it for, and possibly just to check wires, etc., not too bad. The missing beeper or buzzer, bit of a problem for me for the continuity testing, but not a, a, a complete failure. Um, but yeah, not bad. Go out and get one if you're just looking for something to throw in your bag and keep with you. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care.